Welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. In this video we will be applying some heavy image manipulation, turning it from this dark version into this more vibrant bright version. So 99% of the editing will be done in Lightroom while I will be using Photoshop to add some motion blur to the sky and maybe apply a little bit of glow to the horizon. If you want to follow along you can find the raw file in the description of the video and now let's begin. First off, a very important step is to just crop the image so we can nicely frame the C-Stack in the center of the image and still have some nice foreground going on and the upper third of the image is covered by the sky. With that out of the way, let's jump into the basic stuff. I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which will already brighten up the darkest parts a little bit. And now looking at the histogram, it does look quite good with no over or under exposure, so we can work with that quite well. First off, I'd like to restore more details from the darkest parts. So let's just raise the exposure just a little bit. And at the same time, I'm trying to restore details from the sky. So here, let's just bring down the highlights. And you can see now we can clearly see the clouds up there. So that's pretty good. At this point, you can see the colors start to look a little strange. So let's change the white balance and try to get some more natural colors going on. Uh, if you want, you can try the auto setting. I think it does a pretty good job with creating natural color tones. So I'm going with that one for now. But let's continue working on the exposure. Although we have details in the darkest parts, it's still a little too dark for my taste. So I want to try and bring up the shadows. And this should nicely fix that. At the same time, I do want to bring up the whites. Looks good to me. And finally, I'm introducing some more vibrance for some stronger color tones. So here we have the image after the base adjustments. Compared to before, the colors look much, much better. We have a lot more details in the shadows and in the highlights. So at this point, we can jump into the masking stuff, adding some local adjustments here and there. So first off, I would say, let's work on the sky. I'm starting with a simple linear gradient, just covering most of the sky. And I just want to make it darker by bringing down the exposure, just like that. Then I might want to try and use a sky selection mask. It does a pretty good job here. Still, I do want to adjust that mask a little more. So let's subtract a radial gradient, just covering pretty much the whole horizon. I'm trying to get some kind of vignetting effect going on for the sky up here. So the center part stays bright while the outer parts will get a bit darker with this mask. Again, I'm just starting by bringing down the exposure. I also want to bring down the temperature, adding some more blue tones to the sky. Just like that. Could add a little more structure to the clouds, which will help later with the motion blur. So let's just pump up the clarity. All right, looking good so far. Then I do want to take a look at the foreground, which right now lacks a bit of contrast. So let's change that. I'm going to use another linear gradient and try to cover most of the foreground here. First, I do want to bring up the contrast. I also want to bring up the highlights. Maybe even the whites. And finally, add some texture and a little bit of clarity as well. So this makes the whole foreground a lot brighter. I think it's quite nice with this detail in here, but we could adjust it some more using another linear gradient, I guess, for the very, very near foreground only. And here I do want to bring down the exposure. I also want to further bring up the contrast and add some more clarity. So at this point, we could adjust the size of the linear gradient a bit, but I think we're in a good place right there. All right, let's see. I think I want to work on the center part of the image. So for that reason, I'm using a radial gradient, just trying to cover all the center here. 
For this area, let's bring up the whites, adding some brightness to the important parts of the image. I'm also going to increase the shadows here for more details in the dark parts. All right, then let's apply a little more complex mask. I'm starting with a linear gradient and I just want to end it just above the horizon right there. And I'm going to subtract another linear gradient from the top down. Let's say right about here looks good. And I'm doing this because I want the horizon to be much brighter than the clouds above or the ocean below it. Now the only problem here is we still have this rock in the center selected by this mask. We can try and just say subtract subject, but this looks pretty good. So with this mask, I'm going to push the whites. And thus I'm creating a very clear edge between the horizon and the ocean. Just add some more dynamic to the image. I think I might reduce the whites, however, I don't want to overdo it. But this is looking pretty good. And then one more thing. I'm going to use the brush tool, make sure the auto mask setting is selected. And I'm just trying to select the C stack in the foreground. I did get a bit of sky selected as well. So let's try to get rid of that part. But that's looking good so far. In here, let's bring up the contrast. I'm also increasing the whites to make it brighter. And maybe some more clarity as well. So that is looking really, really good. Let's compare to before once more. You can see with those masking adjustments, we have a much better looking image going on. We have added much more depth to the image. So that's looking good so far. Next up, let's begin with the color grading. And I'm just going through the HSL panel real quick. Let's start with the hue. I am going to bring down the yellow hue making those earthy tones in the foreground a little more orange-ish, just like that. And let's switch over to the saturation pedal. Here I'm going to drop the yellow saturation. I'm also going to drop the purple saturation, just because I have a feeling there are some strange purple tones in this image. And let's raise the blues and the aqua tones. All right. Now I think I can also do some adjustments in the luminance tab, mainly for the orange tones. Now if I bring up the orange luminance slider, I think the foreground should get a bit brighter. For this image, there's actually no split toning going on. So let's head straight into the calibration tab. And here I just want to bring down the blue primary hue, giving the sky more of an aqua color tone and also improving those red colors in the foreground. And at the same time, I do want to bring up the saturation here. Perfect. Now the last thing to do in Lightroom is the sharpening. So let's head into the details tab. And as always, I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a little bit of masking, just like that, and then increase the amount of sharpening. And here we have the image after the raw adjustments. So that's pretty much it for the Lightroom part. But as I said, I do want to manipulate this image some more, adding a little bit of motion blur to the sky. Of course, not everybody's going to like that, but I think in this case, this looks pretty cool. So let's switch over to Photoshop. All right, here we are. First thing is we need to make a sky selection. So let's head into the select menu, choose sky. And here we have a pretty good selection. Now I want to have the sky on a separate layer. So I'm going to hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And here I have a layer just for the sky. Next up, I'm going to hold down the Ctrl key and click on the thumbnail of the sky layer to get that selection back. And with it active, I'm going to filter, blur, motion blur. You can see I'm using a horizontal angle to get a nice straight motion blur effect. I'm also using a rather low distance. We could adjust it some more maybe, but I still want to have some details up in here. So let's apply it like this. Physically, it doesn't make sense to have a long exposure sky with a shorter exposure of the ocean. I think as long as you're happy with this, you can do what you want. In this case, 
the sky before the motion blur was way too chaotic for my taste, so I decided to just add a motion blur effect to it. In the end, this will only be noticed by other photographers and of course I'm not shooting for photographers, but for people who want to print it and hang it on their walls. So finally I do want to add a little bit of glow to the horizon. In this case I'm adding a new layer and let's switch the blending mode to soft light. Grab the brush tool and I'm going to hold on the alt key and click on the horizon to pick up this color tone. And before I paint in the glow, I'm going to drop the brush opacity, otherwise this effect might get too strong. So let's just paint in some subtle glow in here along the horizon. We could make it a little brighter towards the center of the image, but I think that looks pretty good. Now at this point, I might want to work on the contrast some more. So let's add a levels adjustment layer and just bring down the point for the highlights while also raising the points for the blacks. All right, that looks great. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask me in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.